Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him, because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Oh, hi, Rita. Come on in. Hi. Here, see that? Looks like whipped cream, isn't it? Yes. Well, listen, it's shaving cream instead. Here, would you put the rest of that on there? Let's go. Cream special, <laughs> isn't it? Okay, I think maybe it's get too much gas. Stop. I don't want to get it yeah. any more than that. There, oh, look. Now, the reason I wanted you to empty a whole can of shaving cream into a brandy snifter is because today we're examining. Pretty usual. <laughs> yeah, today we're e examining a whole group of of uh, combinations of, of things around us in our everyday life called colloids. Have you ever heard that word, colloid? No. C-O-L-L-O-I-D. And there is one of them. Shaving cream. cream. In fact, the reason it's a colloid is because there are millions and millions of very, very tiny little bubbles of air in there. I can't see them. Well, no, they're so small you can't see them. That's one of the things that in order for a substance to be a colloid, the particles that are inside of it have to be so small you can't see them. So uh, somehow I want to prove to you that this is a colloid by proving to you that there are little tiny bubbles of air in there. Now, if you had a balloon, how would you uh, make it bigger? Blow into it. Okay, you blow more air into yeah, it. Just blow if it up. You, if you had a balloon, you could also take the air around it. It would also get bigger, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's just do that. It. Let's do that with these. Come here. Watch. <laughs> more shaving cream with a spout on the end. See. I'll put about a cupful or so down in there. Sort of a large mm -hmm. cupful. Okay? Okay. Now here's a vacuum pump. <coughs> and if I put this top on here like this and turn on the pump, I'm going to pump the air out of there. And because that could be dangerous, it could be an implosion. You better put on the safety glasses. <laughs> okay, now what let us... Think? Well, they're supposed to be for me, but they're, <laughs> they'll protect you anyway. Now, let us take the air away from around uh, the, the, that uh, shaving uh, soap. And if it's true, if there are little tiny air bubbles in there, what should happen to it? It should get bigger. Okay, you watch. Oh, boy, look at that. Okay, so big. Just wait. Just start it. Imagine putting that on your skin. You know, and all of a sudden it's getting bigger and bigger. Well, you'd have to be do shaving in a vacuum. <laughs> 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 So I guess there must have been tiny air bubbles in there. Mm. Mm -hmm. sure. Now I'm going to stop it before it gets all the way up and starts in the tube here. And the minute I turn off the vacuum pump and I let air back in there, you watch what happens. It's soap bubbles. Yeah. Hello. Okay, are you ready? I'll turn ready. it off and I'll watch. <coughs> Look at that. Oh, it all went down. Yeah. Proving that there must have been air in it. Huh? Sure now it's just sort of a, a rim or a shell of, uh, of soap. Okay, now, have I proved that there were air bubbles in there? You can take sure the safety glasses on that. Leave them here because we're going to use this again later. In other words, here now, shaving cream and whipped cream, by the way, and most foams are, well, not most, but many foams are a combination of a liquid, the soap, with tiny little bubbles in them, and therefore can be called a color. Now here, I've represented that over here. See this big flask here? Yes, well, notice I have three things in front. What are those three things? Oh, well, one's a balloon. This is a yeah, balloon, yes. that's air. Okay. And uh, That's a solid, block of wood, yes. solid, yes. And here's a little that's glass of liquid. Okay, now then, solid, I... Solid, liquid, and gas. Solid, liquid, and gas. In other words, Today we're going to investigate a whole group of, uh, well, you could call them chemicals, they're actually mixtures, in which we have a medium, a big supply of something, in this case it's a liquid, and in this medium liquid, we're going to have little tiny particles of a gas, a solid, and a liquid. So far, we've already seen a gas, tiny bubbles of gas dispersed through a liquid. This is a The foam, okay. Now, can you think of, of anything around the house in which you have very, very tiny particles of a solid dispersed through a liquid. Solid particles 
Very, very tiny. I didn't think you would. I didn't think you would. So I have a, I have a clue for you. Milk? Milk. Now, in this case, you can see them because there are so many of them that they finally get uh, so big that you can see them, or such big clumps as well as so many of them. But here's, um, here's the solid that's in milk. Powdered milk. Powdered milk, yeah. I'm going to take just a tiny bit of them, you see? Oh, wait, that's too many. That many on the end of a stick. Not a lot. No, it's not very many. Milk and I'm going to put them in there like that. Now, I don't want you to get that dye into the milk. So here, you stir that milk up with a fresh stirring stick. Now, can you see it in there? No. In other words, what has happened to the tiny particles, do you think? It's dissolved into the water. Well, that's what you think. But if it's dissolved, then you'd call it a solution, and it wouldn't be a colloid. In fact, here's a special way to see it. Come on, let's take it over here. Mara, go around on the other side over there, because I have it all set up so that you can look at... Here is a light, and I can send a beam of light by turning it on out here. See the light yes, on my I hand? Do. Okay. Here is the glass. See what it's marked? It says water only. Yes, clear water, and it's uh, fairly, fairly pure water. I used distilled water, but there were some dust and things in the glass. And can you see any light beam through there? If you can, it's just no. very weak. No? Not much. All right. Now, I will now set the glass in which we put the milk in. What do you see? It's so light. So Whoops, light. there goes my dark background. See, I have a dark background back here so that you can, you can see the, the things easily. You see how that, see that beam of light there? You can see it's it right here? It's much brighter. Well, yeah. Can I see it there and They're not, not here. as much there? Well, no. The, one of the reasons why you can is because this is a colloid, this solid dispersed through a liquid, and this is just plain water. Now, you said that this was a solution. I'll make a solution for you, and you see what happens. Let's move this clear out of the way and move this one in. This is clear at the moment. You see what it says on there, though? Sugar. Sugar. You will agree that if you put sugar in water, it becomes a solution? Yes. Okay. Dissolved I'll put some. I'll put a teaspoon of sugar into that. You can see the light beam now, can't you? Yes. Okay. But you say that sugar dissolves in water, and you watch what happens as it gets... Is all. Now you know the sugar disappears. Yes, it goes into the water. Gradually it disappears. Dissolves. Almost gone, that's quite. Can you see it in there? Just barely. I can. I don't know about... It depends on the angle sometimes that you look at it. But now you know eventually that this is going to disappear completely. We're not going to have any particles in it at all. So that when something goes into solution, it disappears. And even if you shine a light through it, you will not be able to see the beam in the same way. Yet when you have something that is a colloid like this, you will be able to see the beam. So that's a colloid. Yeah, and the and colloid is a mixture. It is not a solution. In fact, here's another glass. See what this one's marked? It says clean sand. Yes. Here's some clean sand. I'll mix some clean sand in this, and you'll see now that there's a difference yet. I'm using the same spoon for all of them, and that's being very unscientific, but I don't think it is. <laughs> okay, now let's look at these three. Will the clean sand dissolve in the water? No, it goes no. to the bottom. Yes, it goes to the bottom, though. and you don't see any light. Now, we have three different kinds of, of combinations here. We have something that goes into solution. We have something that somehow you can see a beam of light through because there are little particles in it. When we put something in here that had big particles in it, the particles sank to the bottom, and we can't see the light beam. That's right. Okay, now let's see if we can explain what goes on here. I think you can explain to me what happens when we put something in and it goes into solution, can't you? Yes, what it's happens? dissolved in. What does that mean, dissolved? Um, well, that's sugar water now. Yes. It tastes like sugar water. If you taste it, you'll <laughs> yes, taste the sugar, right? Sweet. Why can't you see the sugar? Well, because it's broken into little particles. It dissolved. Not only little particles, molecules. And nobody can see molecules, can they? In fact, here. I have these things like this. I know you someone who plays tennis. Yeah. <laughs> you see on that little plate there, I have a little tiny lead shot. Let us assume that that represents a molecule of water. So small you can't see it, right? Can't molecule see. of water <laughs> you can't see. 
Now, if we dissolve something like sugar into it, we could take a big clump like this, and it would break all down until it got something like that size, and these would no longer be visible. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Now, if we take some sand and we put that in water, we'd have a big clump like this, and it wouldn't break up, would it? No, it just goes to the bottom. So we would be able to see this big thing, mm -hmm. while we wouldn't be able to see that little thing. Well, now, see, there's a big difference in these two sizes, isn't there? It sure is. And the colloid that we're talking about <coughs> is halfway in between. If you take something like the powdered milk, big pellets or, you know, big grains of it, and you put it in, it breaks down into like that. Oh, just in between. Big enough for you to see, but not as small as a molecule, and not as big as this grain. And it is big enough for you to see. So here are the three kind of things we have here. A solution in which something disappears. A, let's call it coarse mixture, in which you can see the particles even without the help of a light. And a combination, or a, a, a solution, or a, I can't say solution, a mixture in which the particles are so small that they stay up into the liquid. And you can see them when you shine a light through them. Now, which, which of the three have we got here? Take a look at those three. Well, the sugar would be the solution. The, the sugar is a solution. Yes, okay. because you can't see it. Yes, okay. and? Well, the milk would be the pink colloid. Color, this colloid. Yes, right. and the and clean the, sand? That would be the coarse mixture, okay. because it's on the bottom. Well, now, this m sort of makes sense, but there's one question that I think maybe it might occur to you if I propose it in a way. Uh, it, it might intrigue you, and that is, if it is true that these particles are so big, they're bigger than molecules, why do they stay up in the water? Why don't they settle down? Gravity's pulling down on them. And well, why don't they? Yes, isn't that a... Why shouldn't they fall down? Now, in some cases, people call these colloids. In fact, you might have heard the word suspension. And if the particles are big enough, eventually they will come down. But these particles, if it's a true colloid, will never come down. Why not? Well, have why to be some. come down? Well, Maybe there has to be some force... doesn't want to float around. It well, gravity's pulling down. There has to be something to overcome the force of gravity. Remember my old friend, the molecule model up here? Yes. All right, well, let's see if I can explain it to you why. Here is a big container, and when we turn on the motor, that, that is heat, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This time, we're going to use those little tiny pieces of lead shot that I showed you for, before, our water molecules. Okay, now we're going to put in a piece of sand. And this may look like a croquet <laughs> ball, but it's really a piece of sand. And if we put the sand down in here like this, and notice it's not touching the bottom so that when I turn the plunger on here, the plunger is not going to hit the ball. When I turn it on, we're going to now vibrate the air water molecules around it because they're going to be heated up. You watch what happens to the big grain of sand. it's true it got moved around a little bit it didn't seem to move too much did it no this means that what happens when water molecules bang into a grain of sand no, it stays there it stays right just right where it is and gravity being stronger pulls it down okay that's a big particle like the sand now do you remember what these uh these ping pong balls represented mm -hmm. the uh, colloid yes the colloid let's put those in there and gradually turn on the heat so we uh, get the water molecules moving around you watch what happens to them Notice that in spite of the fact that these are heavier than, than, and would sink down ordinarily, when the water molecules bang around in them, there's enough force for that to keep them up. Also notice I have minus charges or little lines on it. Yes, if those, if, well, if those were electrical charges, would these two particles come together or would they separate? Well, I guess they would separate. Because you know. they're both the same charge, yes. So when you combine the idea that electrically they're the same, they would move apart, and you combine the water molecules banging into them, that's why these particles stay up here like this. <laughs> In this case, people often say that these particles are held in suspension. And you can see why. They're suspended yeah, sort of up in the liquid. Now, remember, remember over there when I showed you that flask? You said that, there, that the flask represented the medium in which these things were, mm -hmm. it was in case of a liquid. And we saw a, a, a gas dispensed in the liquid, dispersed in the liquid, which was the balloon. And we saw a solid dispersed in the liquid, which was what? The milk. The solid is milk. In suspension. Yeah. And we still have that little glass of... Uh, of water over there. In other words, we have to put uh, liquid 
into suspension. Well, liquid and liquid is, isn't that being suspension? Because it's well, still you mean there. yes, but what? Let's take two two liquids that don't dissolve in each other. Over there on the table, see it? In fact, I put some chairs down. Let's sit down this time. Would you move that balloon over? That's not part of this. That comes up next. Um, here are two bottles of liquids. Down below is vinegar. And up above is salad oil. You see that in the store. Yeah. You have the, uh, salad salad oil dressing. On top. Salad dressing. Well, notice they don't mix. In fact, shake them both oh, you up. You shake one, I'll shake the other. And I'll put it down. Now, it looks like they mix, doesn't it? And they are mixed up, but the, it's kind of like the sand in that the bubbles of the salad oil are fairly large. In fact, look what's happening already. See it? It's separating. It's selling, settling out, just like the salad dressing does. So when next time you use it, you have to shake it up again. Yeah. And what you're attempting to do is to break it up into small enough little, uh, little droplets so that they will stay in suspension. In this case, however, it won't work because these two uh, settle out. So one of the ways of, of solving this problem is to put something in that helps break it up helps break up the little uh, molecules, or the little um, uh, globules, they're called, of fat, or oil, and breaks it up into smaller little bubbles yet, like the shaving cream. Well, what would be anything that could Well, here's happen? one thing. This is detergent. Detergent? Yeah, you put some detergent in up about that much detergent in it. In other words, if you want to really uh, fix your salad oil so that you don't have to shake it up, why well, just put some detergent in it, it'll fix it up. But it tastes it great. It tastes great. <laughs> Keep your system clean, though. Are you sure you got the right one? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you don't necessarily have to use soap, although soap, one of the reasons you use soap is that it does the thing that, that I talked about, breaks it up into small little particles, and it's called an emulsion, then. This kind of a mm -hmm. color is called an emulsion. You can use various kinds of things, like mustard and uh, other things, too. Shake that one up now. I'll shake this one up, and you watch what happens. Imagine putting detergent in your salad oil. Well, uh, that was only because I wanted to show you that probably the, the best and most efficient emulsifier or thing that breaks that up and makes a collide out of this combination is soap. Now, you see yours looks is staying up. See mine? Mine's already beginning to settle down here. You can see the water down below and the oil up above and yours but is staying mine's just up. Well, I'm not sure that this is a true collide. Remember I said if it had to be a true collide, it would stay in suspension mm -hmm. forever. I think yours will eventually settle out, so it's only kind of a temporary one. But there's a good idea why soap works. See, it breaks the oil up into little tiny droplets and can be washed away oh. more easily, you see? Gee. Well, now I see mine settling very good. So now we've seen a solid liquid and gas dispersed in a liquid. And uh, we call them either a suspension or a uh, solid sometimes or emulsions. Now, you see that balloon there? Yeah. Well, now, what does that represent? Oh, it's a gas. That's a gas. And that, that's the same sort of thing as that big flask that we had over there. This time, we're going to have things dispersed through a gas. You see those three over there? Yes. Okay, bring them over. Here's what we're going to have dispensed through them again. Solid, liquid, and gas. Yes, we're going to have solid, solid, well, solid this way, liquid, and gas. This time, dispersed through a, a gas. Now, can you think of anything around the house where you have a solid, little tiny invisible particles of a solid spread throughout a gas? I didn't no. think of it. Most people never even think about these because most people have no reason to deal with colloids. Only scientists or engineers do. But I thought yes, you'd like yes, to know about them because they're all... Gas. Oh, yes, you have. Here, I'll show you. Yes, you have. Yes. Come on around over here. In this case, we're going to have to somehow make it visible. And here, you want to go back over there? In spite of the fact that it is invisible, we're going to have to ho somehow make it visible. Now, but what happened when we put that powdered milk in? Oh, it was... Um could you see it when we yes, put the powdered milk in there? Not, not when no, it was over there. there but it's the only when we got it over here. All right. This time we'll do the same thing. Now I'll turn my card up this way so we can use this as a nice black background. And there is the gas. Air. Air, yes. Okay, now somehow we, uh, can you see the light beam through there? It's on, but I can't it see is. it in there, no, can you? I can't. Can't see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the light beam is going through there just like it did through the clear liquid, mm -hmm. through the clear water. Somehow we have to get tiny particles of a solid. Here's a match. If I light the match, 
What is the smoke? Well, I'll blow it out and I'll watch. What is that smoke? Oh, little carbon particles. Yeah, solid, aren't they? Yes. Okay. Matt. Can you see anything down there? In there? I see the thing in the light. Yeah, I didn't blow too much of it in. I'll blow some more in there this time. This time I'll blow the match out and I'll just blow it out directly into the fl into the uh, brandy snifter and you watch. See the beam? Sure do. Right through the glass. See? Now watch, I'll turn the light out. Nice. Can you see any smoke? Can't no. see any smoke at all, can you? No. Just yeah, like I with do. the water. In other words, this is like the milk. Tiny particles of that powdered milk in the distilled water, uh, if you took a look at them in an ordinary light, you couldn't see them at all. And yet when you shine a light through them like that and you look at it, then you can see them. So there are tiny particles of a solid dispersed through uh, a gas. And the people who study smoke abatement are experts in this kind of a colloid. Now, that's a solid in a gas. What's the next kind? I guess a liquid in a gas. Okay, liquid in a gas coming up. Can you see anything in there again? No. Okay, this time here is uh, one of those sprays, aerosol sprays. In fact, the word aerosol it comes from the fact that tiny particles are dispensed through a, a gas. Now watch, I'll point it right at the thing and give it one little puff. What do you see? Not too much. <laughs> now, now can you see it? Wait a minute, let me get line the light. Can you see the beam? Yes. If you go up further just yes. a little bit that way, you'll now see, I it. see it. Okay. So there are tiny little droplets of a liquid. I'll turn the beam out again. Can you see it? Gone. No. And now you see it. Now, what is the gas in my breath besides uh, air? Oh, carbon dioxide. Okay, I'll blow out. some carbon dioxide in there and see if you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a oh. gas dispersed through a gas. Why can't you see it? Well, I guess they go into each other. It's gas and gas. Very small. See, in other words, the carbon dioxide is in molecule form, so therefore you mm -hmm. can't see it. In spite of the fact that the light is still on, you can't see it. Okay, that's that kind of colloid. Various solid liquids and gases and tiny particles dispensed through a gas. Okay, we have one more. Now, come on over here. I have a thing to represent that. Here. Is that a solid, a liquid, or a gas? <laughs> it's a solid. That's a solid, okay? It's a bowling ball. A bowling ball. And you remember when we had a liquid, we put s solid, liquid, and gas in the liquid. Now we have to have solid, liquid, and gas dispensed through a solid. How can you do hmm. that? Yes, how can you do that? In fact, can you think of any place where you'd have a solid dispersed through another solid? Little tiny particles of a solid so small that you couldn't see them, except maybe when you shine the light through them the right way. Well, I didn't think you could. That's too hard. But here's a good example, perhaps. Marbles. Yeah, I'm not sure that marbles are. They're probably not really coll uh, colloidal in size, in the particles, but certain types of glass are an example of this. And glass is not really a solid because it's a super cool liquid, but that's all right. It, th there are certain kinds of alloys also metals that are com uh, combinations. How about a liquid dispersed throughout a solid? Liquid and solid? Yes. Well, what's that one I didn't, one too? I didn't, I didn't think you'd get that one either. See this dish? That may look like sugar, but it isn't. It looks like cinnamon. Well, it looks like cinnamon and sugar, yes, sort of brown color. Well, what it is is gelatin, unflavored gelatin. You know that you make desserts out of them? And I'm going to drop some water in a little spot there in the center, and you watch what happens. Oh, the water sinks in. Seems to be sinking in like water does in sand, doesn't it? But it isn't quite the same as you'll see. What? See a little ridge forming around the outside here? It's getting higher. Yes, and if you look flat across the top, you'll see that it's getting higher. Acts quite differently than well, sand. Why isn't the rest of it, of the uh, particles, taking the water? Well... Why does it get higher? What do you suppose is happening to those particles? Remember, this is an illustration now of a liquid, tiny drops of liquid dispersed through a solid. Tiny drops of water are being absorbed and go into a sort of network of solids that are that is called gelatin, and the gelatin is swelling, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. In fact, this much gelatin would make a great big dish full of dessert, wouldn't it? Because it swells yeah, up. So. And that's what's happening right there. See how it's swelling up? It's getting higher and higher. In fact, I'll, um... Oh, God. If I let it get Play a little... With that. There, you mm -hmm. see that? You know what we've just made? I think. What? Gumdrop. Really? Yeah, well, it's a gelatin and sugar and water put together and then frosting on the outside, you know. But it is an example of a special kind of a solid with a, a liquid dispersed through it. Okay, we've got the last one now. 
somehow we have to show tiny drop droplets of air, real small, so small you can't see them, in a solid. I didn't think you'd get that one either. Marshmallow. Marshmallows, yes. Sugar is a solid, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a special now form of sugar with some gelatin, I think, too, in which there are little tiny, uh, little tiny bubbles of air in it. Now, I've proved it in every case here. How am I going to prove that there are little tiny bubbles of air inside marshmallow? How oh, do we do it? With, how take do we, the pressure off. Yeah, how do we do it with the shaving cream? Um, take the pressure out, and if it gets bigger, then it has to have some air. Bring them over. Good. <laughs> You're not supposed to eat them. Oh. Here, it's all right. If your mother doesn't mind, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Would you put uh, five of them in there? Five? Five marshmallows in that little flask. But you can get into a lot of trouble eating the, eating the scientific equipment. <laughs> okay. Well, I see that there is... Uh, uh, mm. I say that there is uh, air bubbles in there, and to prove it, we'll take the air away, and you watch now and see what happens. Ready? Ready. What do you say is going to happen? Well, it should get bigger if it has air. Okay. Oh, it's so big. I guess you were right. Oh, good. <laughs> now, what should happen when I take the air, let the air back in again? It should get smaller. Again. Okay, are you ready? Ready. There they are so back. <laughs> okay, now there is an example of another kind of colloid. Let's go back to that original one because the, most of the colloids around the house are are the type that have liquid in them. I mean, a liquid medium. What is a colloid? Well, a colloid is a substance mm -hmm. that is suspended in air. In well, it water. could be. Well. In other words, what it is, and I want to make sure that you understood this because it's the first time you've probably ever heard that word, a colloid is a medium of some kind, can be solid, liquid, or a gas. The most common ones are usually liquids. And inside this liquid are suspended in tiny, tiny forms, so small that you cannot see them, little particles of a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Okay? That's what a colloid is. And I think probably the, the one that's the most fun is the expanding and collapsing marshmallows. Let's try oh, that yeah, again. Like this that. time, put on those safety glasses. I forgot. Yeah. So next time somebody asks you what a colloid is, you can tell them a marshmallow <laughs> that it will expand. Watch Mr. Wizard is presented each week at this time by the Public Affairs Department of the NBC Television Network in cooperation with New York University. Mm -hmm.